Soviet government. The, the U.S. conditions for its withdrawal from Kuwait, diplomatic sources said here Saturday at the U.N. The acceptance was reportedly transmitted by Soviet Ambassador Yuli Vorontsov to the United Nations during a closed-door session of the Security Council, the sources said. We repeat, this is one report that just moved a minute ago. It is from the Agence France Presse at the United Nations, saying that according uh, to their sources, Iraq has accepted uh, the U.S. conditions for a withdrawal. We cannot have, offer any other confirmation of that at this moment. But, Bob, do you get any indications from the Moscow end that Vorontsov, the Soviets, were still working on this, that there might be some uh, substance to this report? There might well be. We don't know. Vorontsov was wrong earlier this week about, uh, about one... Uh, <clears throat> item. Uh, Gorbachev, we know, has been on the phone all day. Uh, this would be a perfectly logical uh, forum uh, for this uh, uh, to take place in. Uh, there's been a lot of pressure for it to be done, and you, as you know, at the UN rather than unilaterally, or it seemed to some unilaterally by the Soviet Union. I can't confirm it. One can only keep all fingers crossed. All right, I think we're all keeping our fingers crossed as we now are coming up to about 13, 14 minutes after the deadline. Again, that is just one report coming up out of the United Nations. We cannot confirm it from another secondary or independent source. We will, of course, continue to pursue that along with other developments of the day, the evening in the Persian Gulf as we continue with our special coverage of America. You may want to underscore that word, some of President Bush's conditions to end the Gulf War. Now, this is according to Iranian and Canadian diplomats. The UN Council began a formal closed-door meeting on the Gulf War shortly before the noon deadline. It may be important to uh, note that the noon deadline has passed. See, President Bush's ultimatum was that the Iraqis had to make known publicly that they were beginning to withdraw from Kuwait and actually had to start removing their forces from Kuwait by noon today. Betsy Aaron is in Baghdad. We want to check back in with her. Betsy? Hello, Dan. Uh, the bombing was a, a stopped for about 10 minutes and now it's starting again i'd say it's about a mile from the hotel but it seems almost constant once it starts it goes for five or ten minutes uh sky is just full of smoke you can really smell things burning we just can't tell what it is because it is so dark only the moon is showing with a few stars above the clouds conditions set down uh, by President Bush. And uh, as Pickering asked for a clarification, uh, there was a pause at the uh, UN meeting, and that's where things stand at the moment. Uh, the deadline has passed. Uh, Tariq Aziz has complicated things a bit with this uh, rather unclear quotation of his. And at the State Department, as in almost every place else in the world, including along the front lines here in Saudi Arabia, people are scratching their heads saying, well, is this really significant or not? Bill Plant uh, at the State Department, what do you hear? Well, Dan, uh, they're in the business here of parsing things very carefully, of splitting hairs, which can be maddening, but also can be very important, as in this case. Now, here is what the Soviet delegate said, as quoted to me by a United States official. In practice, said the Soviet, Tariq, uh, Tariq Aziz responded positively to the U.S. proposals. Now we have to ask exactly what that means. It doesn't say except, it doesn't say some, or it doesn't say all U.S. proposals. So it looks at first blush, Dan, like something the Iraqis have done many times. Their advantage, a moving target is hard to hit. Their disadvantage, they carry no conventional guns. So they have to have extensive cover from aircraft and artillery in case they get caught in enemy range. These pictures, how this thing looks from high above, General. Bob, look at this. There are 190 fires burning inside Kuwait right now. And that's, that's generally the border between the two of them. All of these are wellhead fires. And you can see 25% of the, of the country is now covered with smoke. If you're in the middle of this, for instance, the Warfa field where they have Iraqi positions, or up in here in Manganish where there's more Iraqi positions, can you imagine what life must be like having all these fires burning around you at the same time expecting a major attack from the Allies? At the same time that you've been living in underground bunkers, perhaps not having a very good uh, a diet, uh, being pounded daily by bombs. I think we have some more pictures from the satellite. Now, this is an airfield, I believe, John. This is the Al Jaber military airfield, and as you look at this, you can see part of the bombing really going in at it. it literally, as we're looking at the pictures, down here are wellheads on fire. This is part of the northern, one of the northern fields, and they're actually on fire. And let's see, now I believe there's another view here. 
Uh, yes, this is another here, airfield. Here again, this is the same field, taking a slightly different angle, but look at the intensity of these wellheads. These are the actual producing wellheads in, in two of the fields. And you can see clearly that burning and smoking, and you know, some of this smoke, Bob, is toxic. So if you're in close proximity to this thing, you've got a little problem breathing. Let's see, one more here, I believe, uh, and that, yes, uh, again, uh, from the uh, oil field fires. Again, very, very clearly, look at the heat. Each one of those red dots that you see here is a wellhead within that oil field. And this is just one field that's on fire. And you can see at the corner, more fields on fire. So all of their fields are pretty much burning right now. And let's see, I believe there's another sequence here. Nope. It said that Tariq Aziz responded positively to the American statement while he was in Moscow. That's according to one Canadian diplomat. And then he added, what positively means, I don't know, and neither do I right now. We should put this in some context. Tariq Aziz is the highly visible foreign minister for Iraq and Saddam Hussein, but he is not thought to be a close confidant of President Saddam Hussein, who tends to draw in members of his family and military men. Tariq Aziz is someone who has been, in effect, a kind of mouthpiece for him and somebody who has done his negotiation, but also always with very careful instructions. So whether he can speak on his own, we cannot say, but that does seem unlikely. Gary Gutley is in New York at the moment with two people who are students of the Middle East and Iraq, and he has some more on that. Gary? Tom, we're going to try to put ourselves in the position of, of Saddam Hussein and his uh, military and political leaders in Baghdad talking with Gary Sick here in New York and Ed Peck uh, in Washington, our two Iraq experts. Gary Sick, first of all, do you think there is something to this from Saddam's point of view or could it perhaps be another trick? Just trying to gain a little bit more time. Being determined to fulfill the UN resolutions. President Bush continuing and concluding by saying military action continues on schedule and according to plan. That is the end of the statement. It was released by the White House just a few moments ago. President Bush is up at Camp David. This does not flatly announce the commencement of a ground campaign, nor does it flatly rule out uh, some sort of breakthrough from the, very, uh, the various machinations we're seeing at the United Nations. But it is indeed a very sober statement indeed, one that does not uh, leave a great deal of room for optimism, with President Bush saying that uh, he regrets that Saddam Hussein has not fulfilled his end of the U.S. announced ultimatum and that repeating. There are increasing signs and strong reports that the Allied ground war to take back Kuwait from Iraq has already begun. Let's go now to the latest to the Pentagon and Wolf Blitzer. David, uh, we're standing by. We understand that the White House uh, later this evening will be issuing a statement, but all indications here at the Pentagon are from informed sources that the long-awaited ground war has now actually started, that the U.S. and the Allies are moving into Kuwait and into Iraq, trying, of course, to uh, get this final phase of the war over as quickly as possible. There are no specific details, but we do know that massive uh, numbers of tanks and troops have been poised now for days, obviously, indeed for weeks, preparing the battlefield. And the order uh, has now been given by all accounts uh, that we're receiving here uh, at this moment. The order has been given by General Schwarzkopf to begin the ground offensive and to try to uh, liberate Kuwait. No word exactly how long that's going to take. No word whether all of the elements of the ground offensive have actually started, whether there is any uh, complete massive flanking movement has been, has been so widely projected over these past few weeks by analysts, whether there is an amphibious or airborne element, but at least some of the initial aspects of the actual ground war, not just the preparations, the probing operations that we've been reading about, seeing on uh, television these past several days, but the actual move to go in and complete this mission, that appears now to have started and we are expecting some sort of formal statement later this evening from the White House. There are uh, hints here at the Pentagon that the President uh, will be returning from Camp David uh, later this evening to go to the White House. David? And Wolf, it's uh, about 4.37 in the war theater now, meaning that this ground war has begun with the troops having from two and a half to three hours of darkness before daylight comes and, uh, and what that would mean militarily. So I'd like you to talk about that a bit. Well, David, uh, one, uh, one source told us earlier this evening that the uh, moon 
suddenly disappeared as of course uh, everyone was anticipating around the seven o'clock eastern time that could have been an element certainly it should come as no great surprise since uh, all, all signs uh, throughout the day had been once this Saturday noon deadline came and went uh, the uh, ground war, all of the uh, ingredients for the ground war had been set in motion. The authority uh, had been uh, given even in advance of the actual noon deadline to General Norman Schwarzkopf, the commander of Operation Desert Storm, to uh, make the final tactical decision when he felt the moment was right to order the tanks, the armored personnel carriers, the artillery pieces into actual motion. And as I reported a few moments ago, those uh, indications that we're getting now at the Pentagon is that the order has been granted and the offensive has begun. Wolf General Kelly earlier today said uh, there would be no doubt that we would certainly know and that the Pentagon and perhaps uh, even the White House would be making announcements at an appropriate time after the ground war started. Uh, right now where you are, it might not seem like it's all starting. What can you tell us about uh, the corridor activity and the pace of things at the Pentagon? Very much like it was on uh, January 16th uh, when the air war began. Uh, there are, are officials here, of course, that are uh, in their office, uh, senior officials in the National uh, Military Command Center. Uh, there is, though, no uh, dramatic movement in the corridors. I don't see officials running up and down the corridors as I did see on the evening of January 16th. Uh, there's no uh, uh, panic. There's certainly no scurrying around here. Very calm. This uh, game plan had been set in motion now for months. Uh, it uh, has been rehearsed. It has been uh, carefully gone over from every logistical intelligence uh, supply point of view, and uh, it now seems to be unfolding. Wolf Blitzer will be back. Thank you very much for that update. And the ground war goes on in the Gulf region. We'll be back with more coverage. It has been going on effectively since August 2nd when uh, Saddam Hussein sent his forces across the border into Kuwait and a serious miscalculation all along the way on his part on whether or not there would be any resistance, A, and then B, whether President Bush could put together a coalition and C, hold it together and finally find the political will to do what has been done tonight to move against those Iraqi forces, not just from the air, but on the ground as well. Well, Tom, as uh, we all know, and as you certainly know, the others there in Saudi Arabia, the president has carried out this program right up to the very end, and now we are in the ground war itself. We received uh, information from our NBC News Bureau in Washington. The president indeed is returning uh, to the White House. He's expected back at the White House at 9.30 p.m. That's Eastern time, approximately uh, 50 minutes from now. He may be speaking as early as 10 p.m or shortly thereafter to the nation. That is the plan. In any case, we have confirmation the president is heading back to the White House this evening. Tom, uh, as soon as we get any more information, please uh, let us know. We'll be coming back to you in a moment. We want to go to Fred Francis, though, at the Pentagon, who uh, reported to us a few minutes ago with a breaking story that the ground operations were underway. Fred, at the Pentagon, do you have any more information there? I can tell you that we, uh, we had long been told by uh, senior officials, both uh, at the Pentagon uh, and outside the administration, that this ground war, the, the heavy fighting in this ground war, they expected to last three to seven days, and they expected to take a great number of prisoners uh, in the early hours, and uh, our sources tell us that that is exactly what happening. That is happening, uh, as you can see from Tom Brokaw, it's uh, four o'clock in the morning over there. We believe this ground war started some hours ago and we expect the president to tell the nation at 10 o'clock or shortly after 10 o'clock when it began. But I will tell you, Garrick, that the nation will not get much more news after that. This is unlike the air war, which began on the 17th of January. This ground war, by its very nature, will have to be a close hold. Uh, in the air war, those jets could attack Baghdad and other targets and come back and then talk about it. These American forces will cross the line, have crossed the line, and will fight, and we will not be able to give you the kind of rich details we did six weeks ago. All Garrett? right, uh, Fred, but try to give us some rich details from uh, your mind and your experience. It is nighttime over there. It's Correct. about 4.40. It started several hours ago because our forces wanted to go in at night. How do they operate at night? We hear of these night vision right. lenses and goggles, it, but tell us about it. Yeah, the, uh, the American tanks uh, that leading the attack, the M1A1 tanks, and the, and the uh, Humvees, those uh, new kinds of Jeeps with their tow uh, anti-tank rockets, those, those weapons can see three, 4,000 meters ahead of them. They do not need light, uh, and, and they can spot targets three to 4,000.